So now we're going to remove the crank pulley. And to do that, we're going to have to put a puller on here that pulls it away from the engine. You do not want to put a screwdriver back here and pry on it. It will punch right through this timing cover. So to prep this, we're going to throw some WD-40 in each of these threads. Please. And then we went to AutoZone and got a brand new puller kit like this. So we're just going to thread these in and put the puller on it. So using the 18 millimeter socket, we're going to remove the center bolt in the crank. And that had a washer around it. So that's what was also holding this pulley in place. So now we can use our puller set. And what we've done is we've taken the chicken foot looking thing and put it on the big uh, threaded rod that it comes with. And we're going to put our cap on the very front of it. That's going to help center it. Now we're going to drive it in here and then we're going to line up the uh, crank pulley threads with the provided uh, rods that come in the kit. So each of them will go into the actual balancer where the threads are. So we'll line up all three of those. So with everything set up, we have three of our uh, bolts here that have gone into the balancer all around. And then we have our threaded rod going all the way through. And we've threaded it enough to where this chicken foot, as we'll call it, is now up against these bolts. So now as we tighten this down, it's going to continue to pull the balancer away from the engine. When threading these in, be careful that you don't go too far and drive into the timing cover. So once they're once they're in good enough, then uh, you can continue to this step. So we'll go ahead and start to ratcheting it. And as we do this, it'll pull the harmonic balancer away from the uh, timing cover. So once again, never put a screwdriver back in here. On a bad engine that I had, I tried that to pry it away and it cracked right through the timing cover, so you never want to do that. There we go. So now we've removed the uh, front crank pulley. So next we're going to roll the engine upside down and remove the oil pan. So on this engine stand we'll just be removing this piece here and that'll allow us to spin it on the stand. Also, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and take off these uh, intake gaskets, the intake manifold. They'll just come off and we'll probably be getting new ones. Once you turn the motor upside down, you are going to have some more coolant finally leak out, so make sure you get a pan under there. To remove the oil pan, we're going to use a 13 millimeter socket on all of these bolts. You will need a deep socket on the end ones with the studs, or at least a uh, wrench. With all the bolts removed, we're going to remove the oil pan. Do not pry on it. Uh, you don't want to bend it. You can whack it with a uh, rubber mallet or something very gently if it's a problem. And so here we have the uh, whole bottom end oil pickup little shreddings of it. So we're finding tiny little pieces of metal in here. And be careful if you're going to clean this out do not use brake parts There's cleaner because it will break up the paint and it'll start to crack off and then you have to completely strip all of it so none of it goes into the engine. Next we're going to remove this oil pickup tube and so that's going to be two eight millimeter bolts here and a ten millimeter bolt here. And we're just going to get this out of the way so that when we flip the engine back over to remove the cam covers, it's not uh, exposed. It won't get hit with anything. So now with the 10 millimeter bolt and the two 8 millimeter bolts out, we're going to just lift out the oil pickup tube. Make sure that the seal comes out with it. It's right around the pickup. Next, remove the uh, oil pan gasket might be glued on a little bit and have a few tabs for alignment 
that just comes off straight up. So now we're going to flip the engine back over. Okay, we're going to lock it back in place and go after these cam covers. To remove the cam covers, it's a 13 millimeter socket. You'll have to use a deep one on this top one with a stud. And we're going to remove the two here on the front. Then these ones on the outside running down the side. Then proceed to this side and the same thing, 13 millimeter. You have bolts on the top and the bottom there and running down the sides of the cam cover on this side. As you're removing all of these, keep in mind there are gaskets that go around each of them. So just keep track of them. To remove the cam cover, be very careful and take a flat spade. Under here there was a good enough gap that you could start to move it. And then just remove the cam cover. There are seals that go around each of the spark plug ports, so be very careful. Make sure they all come out with it, otherwise they'll remain right here. So now we're looking at the uh, top of the cylinder head here. Got our dual overhead cam, intake cam, exhaust cam, secondary and primary chaining. You'll also have uh, the gasket for the cam cover right here. Uh, glued in the top part, but you can go ahead and uh, just remove that. Now pull off the uh, passenger side. Yeah. Same thing, just make sure that all these come out with it. Next we're going to remove the water pump assembly. So we're going to take a 10 millimeter socket to remove these four bolts, which will remove the pulley. Then we're going to remove these other bolts to remove the actual water pump from the block. First. Okay, so to loosen these bolts, uh, it's a little difficult because as you go to loosen it, the wheel will just spin. So something you can do to hold this in place without compromising marking anything up with a pry bar is put uh, one of these on as tightening it and then take another 10 millimeter as loosening it. That one we've already broken loose. So then you're opposing yourself as it breaks loose. This <laughs> one will tighten one. One, two, three. <laughs> See who breaks loose. <laughs> oh, that first. was loose. That was way loose. Okay, so now we just got this last one. Yeah, I can just hold it like this. Go ahead. So once you've uh, broken them all, all loose, down to the last one, you may have to retighten one bolt to use this technique, but uh, slightly tighten it just enough to break the last bolt loose and then they'll all come out. So once you've removed all four of these uh, bolts, then the pulley will come off. So now break free all four of these 13 millimeter water pump bolts and uh, break them all loose before you take any of them completely out. So you can gently pry, make sure that it's going against the pulley and against the block and not the timing cover. And as you gently pry on it, you'll see a gap start to form between the water pump and the block. All right, so there is your water pump. So to remove the timing cover, we are gonna have to remove a few pulleys. This one we're removing with a 13 millimeter socket because the bolt for the timing cover is behind it. So we'll go ahead and remove that one. Make sure to remove the alternator bracket here. You have some 10 millimeter bolts here on the bottom side here, also down here and right here. If you don't remove uh, this bracket, then you still have it holding the timing cover to the block. Now we're going after all of the timing cover bolts. These are 13 millimeter, and you just have to go around the whole engine and find each of them. And some of these bigger ones, will be an 18 millimeter because they have the stud. So you can simply just slide the 18 millimeter socket over it and onto uh, the inner part here. But the rest are 13 millimeter. And we're just going around the timing cover 
and getting each one of them. So on one of these you have a 13 millimeter nut and it holds the bracket on. Then you have the 18 millimeter uh, nut on the back of that one, just like up at the top. Cool. All of our timing cover bolts and studs are out. With everything removed, gently tap on the top here and the timing cover will start to separate. You can then see it separating at the front. And there we are with our timing cover seal. So there's the front timing cover. So just as reference, this engine had 50,000 miles on it. This is how much tension is in the chain. It's pretty tight. I've seen a lot of uh, forums lately, Facebook pages, where they're asking what is normal. It's pretty stiff. And these are the uh, chain tensioners here. And apparently they break pretty easy if you hit the red line. So you have one on each side. And then here's the chain tensioners as well. Just help uh, keep it tight. You'll notice on the front of the timing cover, there's a crankshaft sensor here, position sensor. And so when you come up to the engine, next you're going to find this crankshaft position tooth wheel. So we just put the 18 millimeter bolt back on the front of the crankshaft we're turning the crankshaft and it's pretty neat to see all the intake and exhaust cans moving. And we're going to line everything else up, though it may not be necessary. We're going to mark relationships to where everything was when we took it off. Like I said, you have to go like 36 revolutions to get this. Right. Second timing mark. So we're watching this timing dot right here, and we're watching the paint. There's a painted tooth coming around, and you'll get real close where they're off by one tooth, and then the next time you come around, they're off by a complete halfway over, and you just gotta keep going until they both line up. Well. So we've turned the engine over several times, and finally the painted tooth is lined up with the dot. So now we're just going to mark relationships to that. So now on the lower crankshaft gear set you'll see a timing dot and right under it there is one of the uh, links that has the paint mark on there. Might be kind of hard to see. But with that lined up when you come up top here you'll now see another painted mark and it has the timing dot there on the wheel. Then over on the other side, you'll see the master link right here. It's a different color and then it has another timing dot that's lined up. So then on the back side, which you cannot see on this first chain, it will also have either another a different colored link or a painted mark that should also line up with this dot here. So to get it to this point we had to rotate the engine several times depending on uh, where the engine is you may have to turn it several several times. Next we're going to remove the timing chain tensioners. There's one on each side and they are marked left and right. So you have an L for left and that's for the driver side. So they're 10 millimeter bolts. We'll take each of those out and uh, you'll see that the chain will become very loose after that and the guides will uh, have a lot more slack in them. We'll go ahead and take off this one.
as you take these out, you'll notice the chain will push away from them pretty strongly. They are providing quite a good amount of uh, tension on here. So, with those moved out of the way, you can see there's plenty of slack in these chains. When removing the timing chain guides, these ones will slide off, but these ones are bolted on. And they are side specific on the, these, even though they look the same. You'll notice a divot in, on here as it goes in for the uh, passenger side is what this would be. So as you pull it off, take note that on the back side, uh, this one happens to say Morse 3, and the part number is the 6L253-BA, as in Bravo Alpha. On the other side, it also will slide right off. It does not have a divot. It's flush. And its part number, it will say uh, Morse 1. And then for the part number, it has the SL253-AA. And that would be the driver side. So now that we have enough slack in the timing chains, we'll remove them from the gears. And we'll lay them down. There's one side. So if you lay the timing chain out, you'll notice the master link is a different color, will be on one end if laid out this way. And then on the other end, you'll have the other master link and for the other chain, it's the same thing, just painted uh, with a paint mark on each one. And this will be important for assembling the engine. I just wanted to show you that. To remove the gears down here, you'll notice they are keyed, so they only go on one way. We'll remove both of those. And so, yeah, once again, it has a, a key mark on it and it's keyed right here. This does only go on one way because there's a timing dot on the face of it and not on the back. So now we're removing these other timing chain guides. You'll notice they are also side specific. This one is pretty squared off that's on the passenger side. Driver side is more of a wedged shape. So we'll go ahead and take these off with their eight millimeter they're eight millimeter bolts. We'll take them off their eight millimeter socket. Got an extra long bolt here on the bottom. Next, we're removing the oil pump. Eight millimeter bolts on this as well. Just three of them. So these three bolts are all the same size. And the oil pump will now just slide right off. So the way the uh, oil pump operates is it's bringing oil up through this pickup tube that we had removed. And as the crankshaft's turning the gear on the inside, it's then pushing it uh, out here, out of the back side, and through the block here. On the driver's side cylinder head on the back, for the last bracket, make sure you take off the 10 millimeter on the bottom and 13 millimeter bolt so that the heater hose tube is now not connected to the cylinder head. Next, we're going to be removing the cylinder head bolts. Uh, we'll probably replace these with studs, but these ones are bolts. And it's 13 millimeter is the size, and they're just down there in the cylinder head. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and then you have another five on the bottom. Two, three, four, five. 
Now, the order that you take them out isn't quite as important as when uh, you're putting them back on, but uh, I'd still recommend just breaking all of them loose and then go ahead and start removing them. With the head bolts out, you'll just lift directly up on the cylinder head and remove it. Uh, be very careful because as soon as you do take those head bolts out, the only thing that's holding uh, the cylinder heads on are these dowels that it's sitting on. And they're just here on the top. So potentially it could come off pretty easy. So right now we're looking at uh, the pistons on the passenger side. And it looks to me like they may have been leaning out as they're starting to get burned towards the top. And that was our suspicion for the driver's side, uh, cylinder number eight. So this is cylinder number one, two, three, four. Five, six, and seven is the one we believe is detonated. And eight would be the end one on the driver's side. Here's the head gasket. We'll go ahead and just remove that now. It's just a plate, multi-layered plate. All right, so with all the head bolts removed, we're gonna go ahead and pull the cylinder head off. Lift the cylinder head off and set it out of the way. So as we suspected, it was piston number seven and it has actually completely melted the top of that piston. You can see the uh, rings down in there a little farther, but the whole top of that piston has melted from uh, apparently running lean. And so we're gonna go ahead and give the engine a few revolutions to show you. This also appears to be lean over on the tops. But let's see. Yeah, yeah it's a little bit a little scarred. possibly scarred at the very bottom. But maybe not.